What's up, guys? <laughs> Hi there, and welcome to the next part of our basically build a computer for a developer and um, just the process along the way, do's and don'ts. What we're going to do now is install our operating system. What do we have today? So we have Windows 10 on a USB stick, and we have a bunch of other junk, but all we really did was get a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. All right. We will be showing how to get this at the end, but we figured we'd show the end result first, just for a little bit of excitement rather than six minutes of installing on a USB stick, so. <laughs> yeah. So for this system, would you be able to install other stuff as well, like Linux or maybe um, a hypervisor or maybe even a Hackintosh? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't know anything about hypervisoring. Um, you can install Linux, possibly a Hackintosh, but I don't know anything about that either. I'm imagining there's some pretty strict requirements. I don't know. <laughs> okay. What do you think? Um, yeah, if you're looking into making a Hackintosh, look at like specific parts you need to get because not everything's compatible. Um, your new Hackintosh might not like your new RTX card and uh, so forth. Yeah, so we're just installing Windows. This is one of those terrible videos where instead of recording the screen, you record the actual screen. So we changed perspectives and obviously when we turn the computer on, it's yelling at us because we did not put in our boot media, AKA the USB drive. Actually, if you get to this point, it means a lot of stuff is going right. It means all the hardware is in and things are good. So if you turn it on, it'll go through the boot and... Voila. Voila. Windows, a la virus. <laughs> then we just go through the setup process. We're gonna select English. <laughs> Try to. Yeah. And then we install. Uh, if you have an existing installation, it might be like, hey, do you wanna upgrade? You can say custom install. Uh, you don't have to put in a product key at installation time. Yeah, so you can go in later and add the, the key. Uh, here you wanna sign away your life and no one's ever read it actually. Hey, I read that, it's pretty good. <laughs> so this is what I was talking about. Upgrade, custom install, go to custom install, and it's just one drive, and that's our terabyte drive. Next. And then the waiting game. How would you do a dual boot? Yeah. You would use something to manage your partitions. There's lots of free utilities for that. Um, something I can think of is, um, like there's the disk management console within Windows, so maybe you can slave the drive to another computer and move stuff around. There's lots of options, but the principle of it is cut your hard drive in half and install one and then install the other. And what you'll have is a bootloader, which is going to control uh, whether to boot into Windows or to boot into Linux. Um, the bootloader can be seen as kind of the first program that decides what operating system you have. In Mac, uh, if, you're, if you're doing like a Hackintosh, you, you might be familiar with Boot Camp. That's what allows people to have a Windows and a Mac installation on the same drive. All right, it's gonna restart. It's getting ready. Yeah. So if you wanted to install a version of Linux on here instead of Windows, you would just put it on a USB stick just like you would with Windows and it work exactly the same way? Yep, it'll be a, some Linux distros actually give you like a live testing stage and then you're, at, you're in the operating system to later install it onto the hard drive of it. So it's a similar process. Uh, Linux has made it very easy because people just tend to get used to swapping in and out of Linux distros. Well, here it's starting up for the very first time. And when Windows starts up for the first time, it has to collect a lot of drivers to work and deal with your software. And another thing you gotta do with Windows 10 is create all the user account stuff. So I'm just gonna flip through this. I mean, it's a basic fill out the form, give it your email address. Uh, if you don't want a live account, uh, what you'll do is unplug the ethernet, take it offline, uh, it'll error out and allow you to create a local account. That's just kind of a, a bug for me. <laughs> All right, well, let's... Uh... Okay. But wait, there's more. There's more? <laughs> yes, there's more. So what we're going to do now is connect the uh, Ethernet, and we're going to install a bunch of programs at once. I have a fancy utility program. Uh, it's called Ninite. 
N-I-N-I-T-E.com. Go there to install a bunch of apps at once. So the very first thing I do whenever I install Windows is go straight to Ninite.com and that's gonna give me a list of software that I can't get to because internet's not working. All right, here's Ninite. Um, Chrome, Opera, Firefox, um, just Image like Firm. LibreOffice. <clears throat> What's that? Uh, it's just a word processing. Email client, VLC, .NET, Silverlight. Um, I have some image Definitely editors. Definitely need uh, paint.net. Yeah. <laughs> so there's actually a whole special thing over developer tools. So you can install Python, Notepad++. I think you've worked with FileZilla before. There's Putty, Eclipse, and Visual Studio Code. Uh, Pretty sweet. So for this purpose, I'm just gonna install all of these. Um, I know we'll get to using them sooner or later on your channel. And uh, yeah, we're good to go. It'll send a program, save, run. So if you want to get Windows 10 on a USB stick, you can get the official Windows 10 ISO from the Microsoft website. Download that and is that good? That's gonna come with a tool, Windows 10 installation media, and it'll look something like this. From here, you can choose to upgrade this PC, which we're not gonna do that, obviously. So you'd click create installation media and follow the prompt. Yes. And then choose USB flash drive, or if you want an ISO file, if you want to virtualize it. Or you could burn it to a DVD, very old school, but st some people still do it. Yeah. So USB flash drive and next, and then you go from there. What it, do what it does is download it, verifies it, and throws away all the extra stuff. So I think you guys pretty much get the point. You can see we downloaded all these applications in just a couple of minutes, and we're currently downloading Windows 10. I guess we don't really need that, but if you guys want to follow along, that's what you would do. But that's pretty much all I have to say. Any final words? Building a computer, it's a great learning experience. If you're a developer, you can really start to understand the hardware that your software is running on and better understand the challenges that writing uh, special software and like using different techniques is going to be beneficial and um, really just start to make connections. So thank you guys for watching. Again, check out his channel if you want more computer building stuff and technician stuff. And let us know in the comments section what other kinds of videos or series you'd like to see from us. Sound good? Yep. All right. Thank you, everybody. Peace out. Like and, and subscribe. Yeah.